him being God, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when he warned about when warned about things not yet seen in the holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Verse 8 it says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. I like that. Amen. We're dealing with Abraham. And I know this the, 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 the large title of this subject of we're dealing with faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. But the subtext is the process of faith. So I'm going to say the process, the process of, faith. of faith. The process of faith. Process of faith. I know in the Bible it teaches us that anyone who comes to God must come to him in faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. So the question or the idea that's presupposed is, is that we as Christians, because the Bible is, well, the Bible is written to Christians specifically, but those who are not Christians, it's written to them as an evangelistic tool. Mm -hmm. We as Christians should want to please God. Amen. But the question is, do you really want to please God? Because well. whenever I'm talking about faith, I'm not talking about faith as in what denomination or what religious doctrine yeah. you talk about or what philosophical, religious, uh, other religion that you follow. I'm talking about faith as a lifestyle. Amen. Because faith is a lifestyle. Amen. Because the Bible teaches us, and that's what Paul is quoting, he's quoting the Old Testament. The just, those who have been declared righteous in God's sight, that means those who have, those who God sees are in line with Amen. his precepts, Amen. his values, his culture, his kingdom. Those who are in line with that, who choose to live like that, shall live by faith. Amen. Well, what is faith? Well, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith, whenever the Bible is talking, is about having faith or having complete trust in God. Amen. Faith is talking about having complete trust or complete confidence uh -huh. in something. Because everybody has the measure of faith. So say everybody, everybody has, has the, measure of faith. the measure of faith. But whenever we're talking about the Bible and the New Testament and the Old, you need to have faith or complete confidence or complete trust in God the Father. Amen. Jesus talked about it. It's interesting how he keeps on. Whenever he talked about it, his message, primary message whenever he's here on earth was the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. He kept on talking about the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about faith. Amen. And I think it's interesting how he's talking about whenever, whenever the Son of Man comes, the mighty second coming, will he find faith well, on the earth? That's weird. Don't you think that's interesting? Amen. Some say when the Son of Man comes, when the Son of Man comes will, he find faith? will he find faith? Isn't he talked about that's in the synaptic gospels? That's interesting how you because you think that, this is me thinking out loud, the Bible, the gospel is being preached all over the world. Isn't that true? Amen. With satellite, television, internet, people going out, you know, face to face. But Jesus talked about, basically, in spite of that, because he's looking on ahead, in spite of that, will he still all right. find faith? What's faith, class? I'm say, what's faith, Tim? What's faith? Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And now we're talking about faith in the context of the Bible is being sure, putting your hope. All hope is is confident expectation of something good. Putting your hope in something. Putting your hope. So I'm saying putting your hope in something. It's like, it's like hope is a gift. Hope, hope is a gift. And you're going to put it inside of a package. The package is the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. 
Because you believe that package is going to protect that gift. So you place it in there. And, as, and Jesus talked about, will the son of man find faith? Faith is interesting. Because how do you obtain faith? How do you obtain faith? We know this. This is Book of Romans. How do you get faith? By hearing. By hearing. Amen. But Paul says, because he's quoting the Old Testament, how can they believe unless someone is sent? Amen. And when that person is sent, that person has to be sent by God. Amen. I think it's interesting because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Or faith, the faith of God comes hearing the word of God. Amen. Because whenever you hear the word of God, you believe something. Uh -huh. You're putting your faith into something. Amen. And you've heard what he's done in the past, and you believe it. You've heard it over and over again, and you've put his words into practice. You've tested his words, and you've seen a result. So now you have confident expectation in something that you do not see. Amen. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to the process. Let's go back to the process. Are people hearing the word of God? Because that's the only way how faith comes. I can always do a test of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping back just a little bit. I can always test whenever I haven't spent the time in prayer like I should have because I don't have as much patience or tolerance of others. Mm -hmm. But whenever I take my time and I pray and I read the word, it's like a garment comes over you. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, it's like uh -huh. an armor uh -huh. comes upon you. Even though the Holy Spirit is living within you, Unless you pray Amen. and speak the word, right. the covering, it's like it won't, just, it won't come out. Amen. It won't be like a protection. And I believe because I've heard it before. Amen. Faith is important because without faith, you have nothing else to believe in. And see, the Bible is not, if you notice anything about the Bible, one of the only avenues of how it's being preached is supposed to be through the Word of God, but you won't hear the Word of God in public <coughs> discourse. Amen. You really won't hear the Word of God in schools, That's right. in movies, That's right. in the news, on the radio, uh -huh. and people talking day by day. So there's no faith or no confident expectation of a reward. So whenever some cataclysmic event happens, someone's been attacked or a nation's been devastated, and that's, and that's true, and that's serious. All of a sudden, everyone wants to believe and pray in God, but people don't have nothing to put their faith back into. Amen. See, when I was younger, I used to think that faith was kind of like uh, something you'd only use whenever you get sick, or something that you only use whenever you try to believe God for a new job or, or something big. Faith is a lifestyle, Amen. and you need to live it Every day. Some say every day. Every day. I think it's interesting how the Bible gives us different examples in the Old Testament. And that's why I wanted to deal with Abraham. When you study the story of Abraham, it's interesting. God called him out of his nation mm -hmm. when he was 75 years old. But if you fast forward to the end of the story of Abraham, he lived to be 175 years. Uh -huh. His process of faith Split, span over 100 years. <laughs> Some say process. process. Span over 100 years. Span over 100 years. <laughs> Abraham didn't have a Bible like we have. Amen. We have Bibles. Some say, bless God, we got Bibles. Bless God, we, got Bibles. we have the Latin Vulgate. Oh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We have the New International Version Bible. Amen. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. Oh, this is good. You got King James. Right. You can have it. He was about 30 generations, if not more, from the flood, where people saw God's mighty hand. Mm -hmm. His mighty hand was so devastating that just about every culture has a, they call it a, a myth about the flood, about the earth being overcome. Every culture. It put an impression upon those three boys. Mm -hmm. But now time has passed. Things which should not have been forgotten have been forgotten. 30 some odd generations, if not more, have passed. I like what Proverbs says, 
The eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro, seeking. Is there anyone who's searching after what is right and want to do what's right? God always seeks out his creation because the body was made for the Lord Amen. and the Lord for the body. Amen. He wants to work in tandem with his creation. So he's searching in the earth, looking for someone to redeem mankind. He wanted to use an individual so they can be an avenue for him to redeem people back to. Amen. Abraham called when he was 75 years old, and God gave him simple word. I think it's interesting. This is really good. He's like, leave your people. This is found in the book of Genesis chapter 12. And if you do this, he's the same. He's always the same. Heaven Father's always, always. He's always the same. He always gives you an opportunity. Amen. And he gives you an opportunity for blessing. If you choose not to, you go somewhere else. I want you to leave your country. If you do this, I'll bless you. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. I'll give you an inheritance. Your seed will be multiplied. And all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I like that. It's real nice. Talk to Abraham, 75 years old. Abraham, but this, is, this is awesome. This is a great opportunity. This is an offer I can't refuse. But don't you think it's interesting how God chose Abraham? Amen. Out of the three boys, there's two or at that time. He picked the one whose wife happened to be barren. That's right. <laughs> so that he can show you and me with men, this may be impossible. But with God. So I'm saying with God. With God. All things, all things are possible. Are possible. And so Abraham got excited. Like most people do whenever you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a childlike faith. And that's beautiful. And he went on seeking out for a land that he could, he'd never saw before. <laughs> but he messed up. See, with the process, let's say the process, the process of faith. Whenever God calls you to do certain things, you want to listen to what he said. Amen. He's very specific. That's right. But he will allow you to do what you want to do. You know why he does that? It's a, it's a process. Remember the sons of, uh, what do you call them? The sons of Boanerges. That's what their names. Remember James and John, the sons of thunder. Remember them? Amen. <laughs> Remember, they went over to evangelize, and they had a deep hatred of the Samaritans because they were mixed people. They were half Gentile, half Jewish. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to go through their town like, no, 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 Jesus and your disciples. You can't go through here. Jesus, you want us to call down lightning on them? What did Jesus do? He rebuked them. But he never cursed them out. Amen. He was never impatient by them. He's like, you don't know what spirit you are of. Right. So he kept them on in the flock. Mm -hmm. It's part of the process. Some say part of the process. Part of the process. Remember uh, Peter. Peter went on down. He wanted to go over and uh, defend Jesus. And remember when uh, I think it was the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. And he wanted to fight with Jesus. He got a sword and cut that one dude's ear off. Remember that? Amen. And then he would let her betray Jesus. Jesus is thrown away. Right. It's part of the process. It's part of the developing stage. Right. Faith is a process. Amen. Don't you think it's interesting about he, whenever Abraham did it? He said, go on in. God's like, go, go on to a land which I will show you. And I'll lead you there. I want you to lead your people. But Abraham brought Lot. Uh -huh. He's still trying to hold on uh -huh. to where he came from. He's still trying to hold on to where he came from. And so that delayed certain things. Uh -huh. It delayed certain things. But remember, God's patient. Amen. Some say he's patient. He's patient. Now go on, on. Let's go on. They went over to the land that God promised them. And I think it's interesting about Abraham. Abraham came from a culture where they had many gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And people, they saw that, you know, they thought the idea of God was abstract, so what they did, they created a concrete version of God. Uh -huh. That's why you see uh, uh, idols, because it's kind of hard to touch. Don't you think it's kind of hard to touch? Uh -huh. All of a sudden, this old man comes back after being God knows where. He goes and talks to Sarah. Hey, Sarah, God told me to go on and move to a land I've never seen before. 
He said, well, how does he look, Abraham? It's not in the Bible. I don't know. But he told me to go, so I'm going to go. So they're like, what's that wrong with this old man? This man's crazy. So he went on in faith and traveled to Canaan. And when he got to the land, there was a drought. <laughs> so say, that's faith. That's faith. Can't you think about it? I want you to look at it. Just look at it. See, we see the end result. That's right. But I want you to walk through the process. Amen. You know how long it took them to go down there? About six months. But God protected them each step of the way. Some say it's a process. It's a process. His confidence in God is slowly building. Uh -huh. His assurance in God is slowly. So what he did? They went down there. No food, no water. We got all these people, got all these souls with us. So he waits. So I'm saying, you gotta wait. You gotta wait. Back in that time, it was very, it's a little bit easier, I think, to hear the voice of the Lord. Because there wasn't so much hustle and bustle. Amen. There was a certain time where everybody went to sleep. There was a certain time when the lights turned out. There was a certain time when it was quiet. You got to meditate upon the good things. You can do that now. It was just a little bit quieter back then. Amen. Pace of life was a bit slower. Have you noticed of God, he takes his time. Yes, he does. You can't rush him. You can't rush him. Sometimes you can't do it. Can't it's do almost it. like plant life. I noticed we dad plant those flowers. You can't rush her. She will bloom in her own time. You can try to open up, but it won't be developed. That's right. <laughs> it's the process. That's the process. You got to take your time. You can wait for the rain to get it. Right amount, the right amount of sunlight to get it. Mm -hmm. Make sure the roots are nourished properly. Uh -huh. Some say it's a process. It's a process. So what he did, he quiet. And God spoke to him. After he went to the next stage, God spoke to him. Amen. Hey, Abraham, I want you going down to Africa. I mean, Egypt. I want you to go down to Egypt. I have a place set us up. So he followed the voice of the Lord. It's the word of God. Amen. Whenever you follow the word of God, he will always supply all you need. Amen. And like Paul says, my God will supply all of my need according to his riches Amen. and his glory by Christ Jesus. Remember, he takes it a step further in his epistles. He will do exceedingly, yeah. abundantly, watch this class, above all that you may ask or think. Amen. Now here's the key. According to the power that works Amen. in you. Amen. Not in him. He has the ability, but he put the power in you. Whenever you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got Amen. the Spirit of God living with him. Some say it's a process. It's a process. Some say it's a process. It's a process. And when he walked with God, you know it's still but we're gonna walk, we're gonna take a time. When he walked with God down in Egypt, I mean Africa, Abraham stepped outside of faith. And whenever you step outside of faith, like Paul says, anything outside of faith is sin. Amen. Oh, we don't talk about that, do we? No, let's stay away from that. When he stepped outside of faith, he started using his own machinations. Uh -huh. And every time he did that, he got into trouble. That's right. And that's the same thing with you. Amen. Let's go back to the earlier example. Remember, God called, a, uh, what's his name, Eve? Noah, to build an ark. As long as everybody stayed in the ark, they were okay. As long as they stayed in the parameters that God built up, uh -huh. they were saved. If they even stepped outside the ark, that's when problems happened. So he lied. Amen. And what happened is, <laughs> he stepped out. And so he was separated. But then God had to clean them back on up. Amen. And I think it's interesting about faith, because now in the, I'm going to stick a pen in there. In our church, not our church, but in the American church, we've talked about faith. But we pull it aside from the rest. Not everybody does this. But we pull it aside from the rest of the scriptures and talk about it like it's its own animal. Uh -huh. Well, Tim, I need $50,000. Use your faith. Use your faith. You got $50,000 faith, see? Tim, can you believe $50,000? $50, Use your faith. So people... They, they, what they'll do, they'll bastardize faith, and they'll try to, but this one guy, well, reason, see, I, you know, I'm, my relationship with God is, I'm like a watch, I'm paraphrasing, and every time he sees that watch, he remembers me. 
None of that is scriptural. Amen. Someone say, none of that, none of that is, scriptural. is scriptural. Faith goes in concert with your lifestyle. Amen. The more you walk with God, the more your confident expectation or your assurance or your belief in him increases. Amen. You start moving away from him being God as all, all omnipotent higher being, but as father who is your source. As a father means as your source. You believe that he is the source of your total supply. That there is nothing that is too hard for him. If you need to be sick as you're walking in line with God, if a sickness comes, oh, his Bible tells me that himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses, and with his stripes I am healed. It's not a separate animal. It's part of my lifestyle. So if sickness should ever come upon me, all I have to do is use his word and believe in his word. So it's interesting how whatever God proposed to Abraham, if you notice about Abraham, Abraham had no need for cars. Uh -huh. What am I mean? Tim, that's, that's, that's old. What are you talking about? That's, no. He had no need for money. So he wasn't believing God for money. Amen. He was believing God for the impossible. Amen. With a barren woman who happened to be barren. And it tells you that he had his own way of thinking how God was going to bless him because whenever God spoke to him in the book of Genesis, whenever God talked to him, he's like, I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless the seed of Sarah. And he was like, and he, Abraham started snickering. Well, what about my other son? What about my other son, Ishmael? Won't you bless him too? See, he didn't really, he wasn't 100% sure of what God will do. Some say it's a, it's a process. Whenever you believe in God for yourself and others, God has to get everybody on the same page. That's right. On the same page. And with them, their case took 20 years. Some say 20 years. 20 years. Not 20 days. Not 20 minutes. 20 years. <laughs> Don't hear about that too often, do you? Because <laughs> we're in a new dispensation when people they sow their seed, they get they're gonna reap a harvest, a show. That's not Bible. As long as the earth remains, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. And during that time, see, you dictate how long that time is gonna be. That's right. If you don't think that's true, study the children of Israel. Remember, it's supposed to take them eleven days to get to the promised land. God took them there. They went down there. And they felt that they weren't strong enough to defeat the enemy. So God's like, okay, since you believe that negative report, it's going to, all those 40 days that your spies went down there, it's going to be 40 years. Uh -huh. Why do you think it took them that long? They didn't go through the process. Amen. They, some say they didn't go through the process. They didn't, go through the process. they didn't develop themselves. They didn't develop them step by step. That's why I want to become the church. I love this. This is awesome. I love coming to church. There's one, two. There's five of us. I love it. I enjoy it because I know about process. Amen. I love it. I, I'm going to say it again. I love it. I enjoy it because I know about process. Amen. You may not think no one's watching, but the teacher is here. And he Amen. watches your development. Amen. <laughs> he notates. He checks and sees. Are you showing progress? Are you continuing in the faith. Well, and he charts your pro Oh, this ain't true. Yes, it is. Don't say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Remember the book of Daniel. We're going to probably end with this. Remember the book of Daniel? Remember that book of Daniel? Daniel saw all these visions. And then there's these dudes with these books <laughs> taking notes about all the actions Amen. of everybody in humanity. That's right. Note to yourself. See, we as Christians, we believe that there's going to be a final day a final reckoning where the books will be opened uh -huh. and God will judge all those individuals. Uh -huh. We believe that that one song I think he said, mark it because your record is up there. Amen. We believe that our actions, there's going to be a consequence for our actions. So we live like we're being judged daily. Amen. Watch yourself. Some say, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Know to yourself. Discipline yourself. So every day, some say every day. Every day. Continue in the faith. Amen. You may not think no one else is watching, right. but someone is. Someone it's is. your development. That's right. And then, see, because the Heavenly Father, I'm at the end of this, the Heavenly Father, 
How should I put this? Jesus Christ is the bishop of your soul. Amen. And the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, will commend you. Whenever the accuser of the brethren comes, because he always does this. See, the Bible tells us he accuses us day and night. When he comes to attack you, give the Heavenly Father evidence Amen. about what you have done. Because uh-huh. he will never lie. That's right. He won't, he can't, someone he can't do it. Can't it's do impossible. It. He means. always speak about what you have done. Amen. And he will always defend you. And there comes a time where he steps on in Amen. and he provides a harvest. Right. But if you don't take that time, remember seed, time, and harvest. If you don't take that time of development, you will never reach the harvest. Amen. You'll never reach the promised land. Right. You can be like, oh, man, I'm running out of time. You can be like uh, eight, uh, back in Moses and his brother Aaron. Aaron, he had the priestly garments. <laughs> but he was messed up. The only thing that provided him to live a long time was his covering. Uh-huh. Which was the anointing. And God's like, take that off. This is scripture. That's right. This is in Numbers and Deuteronomy. Take it off. It's time to judge him. Mm-hmm. And then Moses, after he got judged, he wanted to see the promised land. And he begged God to see the promised land. You messed up, Moses. You cannot do that. Don't be like them. You take that time of development where you're developing your faith. Amen. You're having your trust in God grow. You're showing good fruit. You're producing much fruit, peace, patience, kindness, brotherly kindness, love, and you will reach the harvest. May I take a little while to talk about that? We're talking about the process of faith. Some say the process process of of faith. Don't let go of your faith. It's your confident expectation. Don't let no one else steal your faith. I don't care if you see nothing right now. You continue on, be like Abraham. See, be like Abraham. See it with eyes of faith. Amen. Guys, I ran out of time. I got to do this next time. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are understanding my voice, who may not know your Son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. I extend an open invitation for them to become part of the family of God. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I'm, a sinner. I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me, I ask you to forgive me. of all of my sins. All my sins. I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. died. And that you raise him to life again. Come into my heart, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And remember, class, words we speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life.